understand us, so they're scared. Geraldo Rivera investigates dope, death, and the banditos on 2020. Thursday, starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain on ABC. It was the Cold War, and especially the trial of Joseph Cardinal Menzenti, who was forced to testify in a Hungarian court that he was a spy. And then later, the Korean War, with the coerced and mainly fraudulent confessions of American servicemen. My job mission took place on the... That would spark intense interest in intelligence circles about brainwashing. The CIA secretly commissioned a study of communist brainwashing methods at the Cornell University Medical Center. A leader of that study was Dr. Lawrence Hinkle. He explains first the Russian method of controlling and breaking a person. Absolutely isolated from everyone else with one man whose job it is to get you to write the extent to which you are a criminal. In this setting, you can get people to do most anything, do you see? Because you don't have to lay a hand on them. And by the time you get through and you go up before the judge, the fellow says, were you a spy? He says, yes, I was a spy. The, the, the Chinese never really had this kind of a state police system. They would get him in, and all this fellow does is ask you to write, rewrite, rewrite, and talk to him about your whole life. He graduated from pilot training in 1949. While the purpose of the study was to find out about communist brainwashing techniques, CIA documents show that the agency was interested in developing mind control methods of its own to precondition and control Chinese living in this country to be sent back to their homeland as CIA agents. What do you think they were looking for? Well, I think they, no, they weren't looking for, they weren't looking for agents or anything like that. Yet the agency's perception of the work you were doing, in CIA documents uh, we have examined, yeah. it says that the, the, the project that was being done yeah. here, uh, they intended to use everything learned about the new agents to induce them to, quote, to perform acts of a complex, purposeful nature. Yeah, but that was the never done. The effects of which may be out of keeping with the individual's that previous behavior. That sort of behavior. thing was never done. Those people were not, uh, that, that was, when they first came here, the first people they sent up to see us, do you see, were, uh, were operational type people from the CIA with some rather, rather wild ideas. Okay, this is their perception of it, if, if I could no, just continue. No, it wasn't their perception of it either. No, it wasn't. Dangerous to his being, contrary yeah, to I any previous that, consciously expressed see, intentions and interests, now, yeah, contrary to the good no. of the individual, and subversive to the goals yeah, for which he is consciously working. I understand working. all this talk. But the situation was, you see, those things were never done because of wise people on both sides. We were not able to do this nor interested in it. They and, were, though. Uh, some of the low level people were, but the high level people were not. The truth. But documents clearly show that the CIA was attempting to develop agents over whom they had as much control as possible. Agents who would perform tasks contrary to their own good. Normally conditioned American has been trained to kill and then to have no memory of having killed. His brain has not only been washed, as they say, it has been dry clean. <laughs> Is a Manchurian candidate, controlled by others, to do things against his will, possible? It was a remarkable film because, as far as I'm concerned, it made something totally impossible seem absolutely credible. I would say the answer is yes, but there are many qualifications to that. Dr. Milton Klein, a psychologist, a clinical and experimental hypnotist, and unpaid consultant to the CIA. The qualifications would be the subject selected to produce the kind of behavior that you wish, the amount of time, the procedures that are utilized, and the motivations of the people who are designing, executing, and administering the procedures. You're asking whether an individual can be, under hypnosis, influenced, coerced, persuaded, shaped to perform an antisocial act or a destructive act or an act of violence, my answer would be yes. Captain Marco, will you be good enough to lend Raymond your pistol, please? Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Ben. Sure, kid. Shoot Bobby Raymond through the forehead. Yes, ma'am.
How valuable a tool can hypnosis be in the intelligence field? None whatsoever. It has absolutely no use because nobody's ever been able to do that that I know of, do it in an operationally feasible way. I'm not in any way saying that hypnosis uh, doesn't take place. I'm not saying there's nothing to it. I would say that most government agencies concerned with intelligence operations have been looking to hypnosis as a tool for a variety of purposes, one of which is to carry out and to execute certain intelligence operations on a basis where they would not have to rely completely on some of their own emotional reactions. Actually, they're entail murder. It could, if you consider that an act of killing someone under circumstances of war is murder. I think one has to define uh, what that means. Under circumstances of peace. Under circumstances of peace, it would be murder. Another former CIA agent says that Fidel Castro at one time was considered as a possible target for a Manchurian candidate. Castro was naturally our discussion point. Could you get somebody gung-ho enough that they would go in and get him? But if you have 100% control of a guy, you have 100% dependency. If something happens and you haven't programmed it in, you've got a problem. So in the end, it was decided that a Manchurian candidate was not feasible. But the search for mind control continued. But could the mind be controlled? Perhaps not. But is human behavior predictable? In this area, the CIA did make a significant breakthrough. A personality assessment system designed by the agency's chief psychologist, John Gittinger. It comes close to being able to predict how humans will behave. It's really a descriptive system, an attempt to try to describe personality in a relatively systematic way so that hopefully you can get some kind of an idea to predict what the behavior between different kinds of individuals. Gittinger's system had many uses in intelligence work. One was to draw personality portraits of world leaders. Using Gittinger's system, the agency concluded the Shah of Iran is a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac whose basic problems resulted from an overbearing father. And there were other applications. Your assessment staff played a key role in helping other governments pick their police intelligence agencies, including, we've learned, the Korean CIA, Uruguayan National Police. Can you tell us about this? No. Author John Marks. The former number two CIA man in Uruguay told me how in 1966, John Gittinger and an assistant traveled down to Uruguay and gave the tests in order to select uh, members of the Uruguayan intelligence service. A psychologist who used to work for the CIA told me in 1961 he personally traveled to South Korea as part of a, an American CIA effort to set up the Korean CIA and to give the, the personality tests to candidates for the Korean CIA to choose the best man for their secret police. But one of the basic functions of getting your system was finding the vulnerabilities of an agent, a double agent, or a potential agent. In its applicability to intelligence work, isn't the PAS system looking for a person's soft spot? Well, of course, the answer to that is yes, but I, I, has, I hasten to say soft spot. This is a, what I consider a negative word. Of the hundreds of behavioral projects undertaken by the CIA, Gittinger's appears to have been one of the more successful and more conventional. Other experiments were not as conventional. Neurophysicist Dr. Jose Delgado was financed by the Office of Naval Research. In this experiment, the bull is sedated. Electrodes are implanted in its brain. Delgado transmits an electronic impulse to the center of the bull's brain. Delgado has remote control of the animal. Recently released CIA documents refer to the feasibility of remote control of animals and that special investigations will be conducted toward the application of selected elements of these techniques to man. Other areas were examined through the 60s and 70s. Brain surgery, psychosurgery, creation of amnesia, parapsychology, manipulation of genes. Even though past and present CIA officials 
have indicated this kind of work ended in 1963. And one of those who took part in these programs. Thank you, sir. In 1977, the Senate subcommittee heard testimony from many of them. But the testimony was not that revealing. According to one of them, they agreed amongst themselves to keep the inquiry within bounds that would satisfy the committee. Former narcotics officer Charles Siragusa says that he was asked to limit his testimony by the man he reported to at the CIA. He wanted me not to say anything. To perjure yourself. That's right. Well, either that, I'd have to perjure myself or take the Fifth Amendment. And I'm not about to take the Fifth Amendment for anybody. Okay. Former CIA chemist Robert Lashbrook testified he had no first-hand knowledge of the agency-run safe houses when, in fact, he supervised one of them. And according to George White's diaries, was at a safe house when White conducted what he called an LSD surprise experiment. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, whom we recently filmed near his California home, oversaw many of the CIA behavioral programs. He retired in 1973 and destroyed the records of this work. In sort of a valedictory letter, Dr. Gottlieb wrote that he and his colleagues had been able to maintain contact with the leading edge of developments in the field of biological and chemical control of human behavior. Dr. Gottlieb also testified before the Senate subcommittee, but from an anteroom where he could not be filmed because of what his lawyer termed health and cardiac problems. Dr. Gottlieb declined ABC News' request for an interview. And what of George White, the man who helped the agency in so many of its programs? He would retire here to Stinson Beach, California. And shortly before his death, he wrote to his boss at the CIA, Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, and summed up his career by saying, it was fun, fun, fun. Where else could a red-blooded American boy lie, kill, and cheat, steal, deceive, rape, and pillage with the sanction and blessing of the all-highest? Has mind control been achieved? From all of the available evidence, it appears doubtful. The human will has prevailed up to this point. But as we have seen, work is continuing in this field. Work that we still don't know very much about. How deeply are the Russians and other dictatorships into all of this? We really can't say. And the CIA is reluctant to give out information about it. But the basic question remains, what place does all of this have within a democracy? One final point should be made. As one of the persons who worked on these programs told us, we are very capable, conscientious, and very dedicated scientists working for our country. Their work speaks for itself. This is Paul Altmaier for ABC News. Good night. Here's a great idea. Potato peeler? Nope. Hair curler. It's vanished bow freshener. Freshness in a snap.